In 2013, Google introduced a new library called Wally, which is an HTTP client. So this library makes networking in Android pretty much easy and most importantly, it makes it fast. Why Wally? Because we can get rid of the HTTP client and the connection. Also, we can get rid of the async task, which were buggy as well as had known issues. So with the introduction of this, we had a whole new look at how we interacted with the external APIs. So what are the benefits of Wally? It can enable automatic scheduling of network request. It can allow concurrent network connections, in-memory caching, support for request prioritization, cancellation of request APIs, and strong ordering that makes it easy to correctly populate the UI. And above all, it is very fast comparatively. So to start, let's add the dependency. In the library dependency, search for Wally and list out uh, many of the repository locations. I just choose one of them, which is uh, pretty recent. And uh, Gradle syncs the dependency. So if you want to see the dependency added, just go to the Gradle properties and see it added at bottom. Now the next step is to create the required uh, methods within the application. So for that, uh, let's create a custom application which will inherit the application uh, class. So I extend application. So from here, we will instantiate the Wally classes from where the application can receive the instances. So in the manifest file, I just need to add the custom application, provide the name there. And in the main application, override the on create. Make an instance of the application. And assign it to the current instance. Now to access it, let's create another method which will, which will create or provide the access to this current instance. So I return the instance here. So from outside, get instance will provide this particular instance now I create a request queue which is which will help us to return the instance of uh, the request queue provided by Wally so again I create an instance of that So instantiate only if it is null. So the idea is to create a request queue instance and add your request queue within that particular instance. So we instantiate here. And 
and pass the current context. So this method will allow us to give back that particular instance of request queue. Now the next step is to create the add method where which will be used to add the new request queue coming from different sections of the application. So it requires to have the request object and a tag. Setting a tag will help us cancel a request at a later point if, if let's say we don't need a, a particular a network call. So by just passing the particular uh, tag, we can cancel a request. So in the request, we set the tag. And if you're not passing a particular tag, then by default, we can set a tag. Let's say a default tag. If not, set the tag which is being passed from the method. So just keeping that in a separate uh, constant. And also let's create one more method. Which will, which is for uh, creating a request with the default tag. So we won't pass a tag there. It will just take the default tag. So it's a request object it receives, which is a volley request object. And set the default tag. Just that uh, I just missed out on the setting the request call there. So so we are accessing the same request queue which we defined previously and then adding it to that and adding that same request to that same request queue so applying it in both methods so we have we are done with the, the method to add a request queue now we need a, a method to cancel a request or a collection of requests if it is pertaining to a particular tag element So I pass the tag. And cancel request with a particular tag. So these, will, these are the methods I'll be using within the application wherever I'm creating a request or canceling a request. So just to set the permissions because it's a networking client we need to set the permission for internet so you can see this is the service call response which i am trying to receive in my android application so for that let me just start setting the api request url with the endpoint i'm just creating this in the splash screen activity which we which i had created in a previous tutorial which is the entry to the application in my scenario so i am creating a string request element which is a volley request 
and I pass the URL and the request method type which is either post or a get or it can even be a delete or a put so any of these parameter any of these uh, API methods can be passed I create a listener object I create a listener for receiving the response this is where I'll receive the response if it is successful just printing the same request here in case there is a response coming back from the server also I define an error listener which is useful when there are any errors which are sent from the server let's say for not for not found or no, for not three forbidden any of this will be received here where we can parse and identify the kind of error here so again I'm printing the error here so I can print the stack trace of the error so the method is ready now I just need to add it to the request queue I get the instance of the default application and add the request add the request to the queue so I'm just passing the same request now let's see by putting a debug point and see what is the response coming from the server once I execute the application I have the debug point ready and then I'm running the application so the request is sent now and it gave me a response okay let let me just see what is the response coming back from the server so you can see that the same response is coming back from the server which i had shown previously it's an array of json which is coming back so we received it successfully